All right, there we go. Our project's done. Uh, now we just have to turn it on and see if it works. Um, I did have a issue. Uh, the PC board is thin, and so the um, you see here in the picture, the coax doesn't quite meet the PC board, and I needed to either um, put spacers on the PC board and lift it up, or to somehow get the uh, coax connection to the PC board. And I decided to do that, and um, I was looking for some way to do that connection, and I decided to use just a, a capacitor that was the right shape and thickness, and just jammed it in there, and just put a big blob of solder so it makes connections from the uh, from the top to the bottom. So the capacitor is not doing anything other than acting as a uh, a piece of wire. Okay, um, so yeah, so let's go ahead and hook it up. It is a five volt part, so we're going to need five volts. And we're going to be measuring uh, the transmission of the device. Um, it is a six gigahertz part. I can only go up to 3.2, so we're going to test it to 3.2. I'm going to use a... Uh, um, let's see here. Do I need this one or do I... Should I go? Yeah, this one will be fine. We'll just do this one for now. It's a 30 dB uh, attenuator, and I don't know if I need exactly 30 dB, so we'll go ahead and do that. And we'll we'll go ahead and zero it. So I, I've done that. We have a zero trace now running with a tracking generator. And so we will then uh, take our, uh, put this on our output, and Connect our input, get rid of that, connect our input, and we need some power, so we'll put on, uh, put on five volts there. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, push the power button. And boom, there we go. We're getting uh, 20 dB of gain, which we should be. We should be getting 20 dB. It, it is rolling off, though, down to 10 dB, so not exactly sure what's going on there. I don't know if there's anything I did wrong or not. Uh, it should be, should be pretty flat. Uh, I don't know if... Yeah, I'm not sure. Let's go ahead and change the tracking generator level. And let's just move it up, see if anything changes. I'll, I'll put it here. It was going in at minus 20 dB. Here's minus 10 dB. Still has that roll off. Um, hmm, interesting. And we'll go to, go to zero dBm. Are we starting to compress? We might be starting to compress. Yeah, there we go. There's zero dBm input. We'll be getting plus 20 dB dBm uh, output, so that's pretty healthy there. Um, yeah, it's fairly flat. I mean, it's within 8 dB from front front to front to end. I think the device itself is spec at 2 dB or something. So, yeah, maybe my design's not perfect, but hey, for garage use, if only we wanted to to use this, you could just cal that out and uh, uh, be done with it. So. Yeah, I think we did pretty good here. Let's uh, let's look at it thermally, make sure everything is looking good. Yeah, it looks good. It looks good. Let's go ahead and measure uh, measure it on the VNA, and we can take a look at S11 just for fun. All right, uh, let's do a through calibration on the VNA. We'll be measuring S21. We'll leave in the 30 dB pad and we'll zero it out with the 30 dB pad. You can see here we're right at minus 30 right now. Um, and we'll just go ahead and make that zero. So we'll do a cal response. Um, now it's zero, zero dBm. All right, so. Uh, Let's go ahead and put the amplifier in place. Oh, 
All right. Uh, now we need some power. Um, and wow, it's a lot flatter. Whoa. What was wrong with my other measurement? I'm not sure what was wrong with my other measurement. This is nice and flat response, as it should be, up to 1.33 uh, gigahertz. The other one went to 3.2 gigahertz, but it seems like it was rolling off even more than this. But anyway, up to 1.3 gigahertz. Boy, this thing is flat. That's really nice. Uh, let's see here. Let's um, let's change scale. We'll go to uh, 5 dB. And yeah, it's got a little dip there. But, wow, looks really good. Okay, that looks good. And then while we're here, we can go ahead and measure S, S11 and see how it's doing. Let's do measurement two, uh, reflection measurement, and uh, we do have some whoop de doos and uh, yeah, the S11 is not flat. Let's see here. Let's measurement one. Let's turn that one off. We'll look at just uh, S11. And let's do a Smith chart. Yeah, there we go. So it does have this little wild bit over there. Let's turn the marker on. What, what frequency are those? Those are uh, low frequencies. This might be the capacitor I chose. It's probably not doing great until it gets up here around 50 megahertz, and then it's fine. So probably a little bit bigger capacitor, maybe it would help that thing. That was the input matching the output, or the input filtering, output filtering. Yeah, uh, so that's pretty cool. I don't know, not too bad for a guy in his garage. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to go back to log mag. Um, minus 20 dB. Yeah, it's around minus 10, minus 20. I mean, that's not too bad, I think, for an amplifier. So there you go. Let's go back to uh, measurement one here. You can see them at the same time. Uh, let's see here. Let's turn measurement two off. And scale. Reference position. We can move it down here to... We can see this nice flat trace. Let's go to a scale of 2 dB, and then we will try to find it again. Yeah, there, oops, up at the top. I can't bring it down all the way. Uh, reference level, now we can bring it down. Yeah, there it is. And scale, yeah, we're still at two. So yeah, that's about 2 dB drop there. Very nice. All right, so I wanted to spend a little time talking about the purpose of the video series. It was somebody wanted to see a design from start to finish, all the steps that I go through. Um, I left all of the all of the warts in the video, places where I failed, I had to start over. Um, I'm I'm not a true expert at, at uh, KiCad. I probably probably there are some better ways to do certain things, but. Uh, um, my channel is all about encouraging you to go out and do and do something, go build something, right? A fun little project. I had these boxes. What do I do with these boxes? Oh, I, well, I could do something. Well, I know how to do amplifiers, so let me let me go ahead and try to try to try to do that. I can put the lid on it now and have a have a nice little uh, amplifier around 20 dB. Um, and um, you know, I think the best way you can learn electronics is try to do your own stuff. When you start relying on kits or you start relying on always fixing something, it's, it's nice to try to build something that's yours, that, that, that you've, you've created and, and, and you can take credit for it, you can take blame for it, whatever you want to do, but it's yours. And, uh, you know, you saw it from start to finish and you can see, you know, what I really enjoy is you like you get done with it. It looks pretty professional, you know. <laughs> it looks like you. It looks like you bought this thing. Other than maybe my little bodge here on getting the, uh, getting the things on center line and stuff, I, I could I could elevate the PC board and that make a, make that look a little bit prettier. But um, other than that, um, I hope you're encouraged to go out try a project. You know, this one doesn't have many components. You don't have to have a real complicated thing to feel a real sense of accomplishment. And if you fail, well, then do it again. Try it again. 
um, you know, um, I've been doing this for a long time now, and my my uh, percentage of goodness is usually pretty good. Uh, but I do fail. Um, but I but I say, you know, you learn a lot when you fail, and you know, go do it again. Um, there's lots to be learned from this, you know, maybe better component selection. You could maybe do a spice model on it, try to figure out, well, what's the best capacitors to use? What's the best inductor to use? Um, maybe you can improve the S11 or the S21. Um, so, you know, try to do your own projects. Um, I hope I hope the series wasn't too long, but that's what somebody asked for. Actually, several people have asked me to do a project like that. Anyway. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, these things are fun to do.